Good morning, First Baptist friends. Uh, this is the message for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. Uh, because we're not together, I'm coming to you this way. Um, before I get started this morning, I just want to give you a couple of announcements. And um, it just has to do with our upcoming events um, because things are a little bit uh, odd right now. We're not together. Uh, so I just want to say about Wednesday prayer meeting that we will conduct the prayer meeting again this week by conference call. Uh, some of us, if you feel fine, uh, some of us are going to be at the church together Wednesday night, um, but we'll have our phones. If you need the uh, phone number for that and the PIN number, um, if you have prayer items, let me know about them. Uh, just give me a call and I will let you know how to get in on the conference call. We're supposed to have our Passover dinner on Saturday. I'm going to let you know in the next couple of days uh, what happens with that. Um, I, need to, um, I need to talk to our friend Skip and see uh, what's going to be happening with that and get his opinion and I will be letting you know about that. Um, I'm just going to remind you if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel to please do that. Um, pass the word about our messages, pass the word about our website. If you need to mail in your offering you can send it to 136 East Commerce Street, Bridgeton, that's First Baptist Church. Um, chances are though we expect to be back together again next Sunday. Um, and one other thing I need to let you know about is that our brother Joseph is going to be getting a new uh, mailing address soon. I've been putting that in the bulletin for you for the last couple of weeks, um, but he's going to be getting a new address. So um, maybe it's best to just wait for a week or two before you send him anything. Um, and I will let you know what that is when I receive it. All right, well, let's begin. Let's have a word of prayer and then I will read you a psalm for our call to worship. Heavenly Father, uh, we bless your name, Lord God, and we thank you that, Father in heaven, you are our Savior, you are our Redeemer, you, Lord, are kind and compassionate, you have sent a Savior into the world so that we can know you, uh, that we can um, be sons and daughters of God, that we can be freed of our guilt and sin, and that we can have hope for this life and for the one to come. Let your spirit be with us, Lord, now as uh, we listen to your word, as we worship you together, dear Father, and we pray, Lord, for those who are sick and weak among us, those who are sorrowful, uh, Lord God, all those who need your abiding presence to be especially near them uh, today, Father. So uh, we ask, Lord, that your spirit would be active in our hearts to cleanse, to purify, to comfort, to strengthen, and to establish us, Lord God. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. For our call to worship this morning, I want to read you Psalm number 111, which says, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great. They are studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious. His righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand forever and forever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Amen. Now, one other thing I want you to be aware of is to look below in the description of the video uh, where I have put some musical choices for you today. There are links to other YouTube videos, so if you'll just click on those, you may have to put up with a commercial, but that's all right. Um, some good music choices, I think, for us to, um, to, to sing in our hearts. Uh, there's actually one where the, um, there's nobody singing, so you can sing along. Um, so I am, encourage you to uh, click on all the music links below. All right, now it's time for us to turn to our regular study in Ephesians. Uh, today's passage comes from Ephesians chapter 5, and it's going to be verses 7 through 14. 
We're continuing in our uh, study. So let me read to you the Word of God. Please get a Bible, have it open on your lap, follow along with me uh, so that you'll be able to see what we're talking about. Okay, Ephesians 5, 7 through 14 reads like this. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. Uh, we ask you, Lord, now uh, that you would speak to us through the message, that you would straighten us out, encourage us, help us, Lord, to walk with you in righteousness and true holiness. For the sake of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, uh, friends, last week we were urged against certain kinds of conduct that Christians must no longer participate in. Uh, the people of the world do these things and they approve of those who do them. Uh, and indeed, we ourselves once uh, did them as well. But now, being who we are now, who we have become, we are to draw a line for ourselves and say no, no more of this. Say no to ungodliness of all forms. The words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, the things that are, things that are not fitting for saints. Is it logical? Is it acceptable to approve of and to enjoy and to consume the filth, the sexual depravity, the coarseness that the world serves up? Right? It comes into our homes, it's in our workplaces, it's in our shopping centers. Can we present ourselves to God the way Romans 12 says to present ourselves a, a, a pleasing sacrifice, a living sacrifice? Can we present an acceptable offering of a sweet-smelling aroma to God when we are participating in the very things for which God intends to judge and purge the world? Okay, the scripture said last week, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, right? So certain things now, like fornication, covetousness, uncleanness, they ought to be no part of our lives anymore and, and not even spoken of, lest we be found to be putting God to the test. So verse 7, where we're starting today, if you'll just have a look, that's the conclusion to that last paragraph. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, which is to say, with the disobedient. Okay, Paul says to Timothy in his first letter, don't share in the sins of others. Right? They want to bring guilt upon themselves? Well, that's as may be. You, young man, keep yourself pure. Right? As the scripture says, come out of Babylon. Right? Don't share in her sins, lest you also receive of her punishment. Okay? So verse 8 then, and following, 8 down to 14, develops this idea further, and it takes up a new theme as it does so. And that theme is light. Right? Verse 8 is a very remarkable in what it says, because it does not say, once you were in darkness, but now you are in the light. No, it says, once you were darkness, you were part of the darkness. What's Paul saying? He's saying that the natural born men and women of the world are the darkness of the world. They're not just caught in it, Right? They don't merely live and move in it as, as uh, captives or victims of darkness, but they contribute to it. They cause darkness. They propagate it. Right? The unsaved people of the world are the darkness of it. Now, when you think about that for a moment, I think you will realize that it is, of course, the truth. That's a very strong statement, I think, and if you, know, if you suggested it to most people, they would probably object, I'm sure. But, but 
When we rightly understand the essence of Christian conversion, we will realize that it is, it's incontestable, it's incontrovertibly true that this is so. And to deny that statement amounts to denying the power of the gospel. It amounts to denying the, the whole doctrine of the new birth and, and the nature of the, the kind of transformation that God works in a man or in a woman when he lays hold of a human life. Okay, the difference between the natural born and the born again man or woman is not merely that one of them has come to accept certain religious ideas as true. It is not merely that one of them likes going to church while the other one has no use for it. Okay, the difference is not merely that one of them has, uh, one of them is a more moral, um, upstanding, uh, disciplined citizen than, than the other one. Okay, a person can have a very high individual personal standard of morality and still be darkness, right? Because darkness and light aren't uh, they're, they're not a measure of the amount of knowledge a person has. They are not uh, measures of the strength of a person's moral code. Darkness and light are fundamental opposites, right? They have nothing in common. There's no midpoint between them. There's no sliding scale. It's one or the other. Okay? It's darkness or light. They're absolutely mutually exclusive conditions. Right? It's like being alive or dead. You can't be both. There's nothing in the middle. Uh, th there's no such thing as being half alive. Uh, same thing with uh, pregnancy, right? You can't be half pregnant, right? It's, it's, you must be born again, right? That there's no such thing as half born again, right? Darkness and light is a matter of the regeneration. It is a yes, no question. Have you been born again? You can come across a very intelligent, a very cultured, very well-behaved man, a man of many skills, but ask him certain things about the nature of God and man. Ask him, what does he think about, you know, where did we come from? Uh, what, what is our purpose in life? What should um, men and women be doing? How can they uh, redeem themselves? And you will get nothing from this person but falsehood, errors, um, and, and misleading rubbish. Okay, it, the man will tell you, intelligent though he is, he will, intel, he will tell you ideas that he has come up with in his own head. It's, you know, stuff that he's absorbed from the culture and he's sort of reshaped according to his own perspectives and his own preferences, but not the truth at all. He's a source of darkness, right? If you listen to him, if you follow his advice, you will never get to God you will certainly not be able to save yourself from dying, right? He, you, will, you, will never, you will still go down to perdition. Okay, the man is darkness. He obscures the truth rather than reveals it, right? By his ideas and by his beliefs, he contributes to the sum total of darkness in the world. He contributes to the darkness that causes people to be lost. So go see the people around you. You know, try this sometime. Uh, take somebody aside and ask them, where did it all come from? Why are we here? Is there a God? If so, you know, what's he like? What's the purpose of our existence? What's, what's right? What's wrong? What's good to pursue in life? And invite them and, you know, they'll tell you to, you know, everything they think and, and none of it worth a hill of beans, right? If you follow their advice, what will it get you? And you ask enough people, you'll eventually get every answer under the sun, right? And, and not a word of it true. But people sit in coffee shops and they tell each other what they think. And they joust and they argue and they propose and they counter-propose. And they post their thoughts and their opinions to Facebook and so on. And they write articles, they write books. And it's just heaps of ignorance and more ignorance. Right? They're not just in darkness they are darkness, right? They contribute, they spread darkness. They cause deeper ignorance in the world and, and lead people away from God rather than toward him. If you heed the ideas of men, you are certain to go to your doom. 
Now, on top of that, people always act on what they believe, right? It's not just their ideas, their thoughts that are darkness, right? It's, it's their deeds, right? If you, if you believe that God did not exist, well, would you not live accordingly, right? If you denied the existence of such a thing as sin, what restraint then will you have, right? What limits will you place on yourself? If you believed uh, that all roads lead to God, well, then what motivation do you have to sort out ideas and separate truth from fiction? Uh, if when you're dead, you're dead, well, certainly, why not eat and drink and take all you can, and why not step on everybody who gets in your way? Okay, you see, men and women propagate ideas, right? They originate and propagate ideas. Ideas lead to, wrong ideas lead to wrong behavior, and wrong behavior corrupts the world. So men and women are darkness, right? The case is worse than to say they're in darkness, right? They, obviously that is so, but they spread foolishness, they spread disinformation, they spread uh, falsehoods about God and, and everything that relates to him, okay? So it makes perfect sense for the Lord Jesus Christ to say, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. The world is condemned already because it hasn't believed in the one and only Son of God, right? God sent his Son into the world so that the world through him might be saved, right? Where do false notions about God come from? You know, where do, where do lies and heresies and, and simple nonsense come from? They come from people, okay? They come from average, ordinary people who say, well, I think this, or I think that, or I think all roads lead to God, or I don't think God would ever send anyone to hell, or I think the Bible is just another man-made book. I mean, they are darkness, because everything except the light is darkness. Is that clear? Hey, ask your neighbor about Jesus Christ, ask him about God the Father, about heaven and hell, ask him about salvation, about the meaning of life, what will you get? You'll get darkness. Okay, well, now look in your scriptures in verse 8. You too, the scripture says, once were darkness. And, well, that's definitely true. I mean, and, and it's fine to say that. Right? I fully acknowledge that things that I have said, things that I have done, and, you know, conversations I had with my friends and so on about life and the universe and God and, you know, about what's sinful or so on, um, I'm sure that things that I have said were in error. I'm sure that I've influenced people in a bad way by things that I've said and things that I've done. And I know I'm guilty of, you know, planting more than one bad idea in somebody's head uh, by, by running my mouth. Okay, you once were darkness, right? You contributed to uh, mis the, the, the misinformation of the world as well, right? But now, but now, verse 8 and the key words are this, in the Lord. Right now you are light in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? You're not, now it doesn't say you're light because you got smarter. It says you are light in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, he said. You are the light of the world. But the key words are in him. Right? You, if you are in him. There is, as I said, there's no halfway about it. You're either in Christ or you are not in Christ. Right? Those are the, some of the key words of Ephesians, in him. God chose us in him. Right? Chapter 1, go back to chapter 1. In him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In him we have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. In him, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Right? You were stamped with the mark of God. You in me and I in you. Right? And there's no two ways about it. You're in Christ or you are not. Right? Now, obviously, if you are not, well, I say, come to him. No man comes to the Father but by me, so come. Okay? John 1, 4 says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men, the light of men. In the Lord, you are light. You are a source of light, his light, right? Christ's light. Now, what does that imply? Well, that's what's in the parentheses in verse 9. Okay, have a look at verse 9. See, in all the versions that I checked, uh, there are parentheses. Um, 
Contrary to our New King James Version, um, the, the text actually reads the fruit of the light uh, rather than the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, the fruit of the light is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Well, it's the same basically, no matter how, if you want to call it one or the other, but uh, contextually here, the better choice of word, the fruit of the light is in all righteousness, goodness, and truth. Okay, fruit, the light. What does the light of Christ produce? As trees naturally produce fruit of each according to its kind, what does the light of Christ produce? It naturally produces everything that's good, everything that's righteous, everything that's true. Right? The light shines in the darkness, says the Gospel of John. Right? He came a light into the world. No one has ever seen God at any time, but God, the only begotten, who is in the bosom of the Father, made him known to us, right? Made him known, and he was full of grace and full of truth, right? God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, right? Verse 14 is such a beautiful verse. Awake, sleepers, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen, is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness indeed shall cover the whole earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Christian friends, that is you and that is me. We are light in the Lord. The light shines in the darkness, right? Many will come to your light, the prophet says. What does it mean to be a Christian? It is to be born from God. It is to be born anew. It is to, it is to awake from slumber. It is to rise from the dead, right? It's not just to be somewhat better informed than the average person about life. It's not just to be somewhat more moral than the average person. It is a new creation, right? I will put my spirit within you. I will give you a new heart. You were dead in your trespasses and sins, but you, he has quickened, right? He has quickened you, he has made you alive. You're a source of light. Why then do you live, why would you ever live as though you were still darkness? Why do you work the works of darkness? Why do you receive them? Why do you accept them? Why do you have fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness? Why do you participate in the productions of it and recommend them to others? Is that not an utter contradiction of who you are now? Let's run back through that list, do you think? Let's see the things that Paul has mentioned in uh, chapter 4 and chapter 5. Lying, anger, stealing, slothfulness, corrupt talk, bitterness, wrath, clamor, evil speaking, malice, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking, Coarse jesting, right? Those things are they're the works of darkness. That's what the world serves up, right? Men and women generate those things, they spread them, they fill the globe with them, right? That the works of darkness. That's what we supposedly came out of. Right? But like Lot's wife, you know, we're looking back with curiosity and with longing back at the city of destruction. Right? It's it's like uh, the, the Bible says about Sodom and Gomorrah, they are an example of, they are an example of what will become of the ungodly. Okay, but we are looking back at those things thinking that maybe it's still okay to participate them, in them and consume them. It's like the Israelites who came out of Egypt, but they're saying maybe we had it better back then. Okay, uh, Galatians has a, has a very similar list here about the works of darkness. Um, over there it calls them the works of the flesh but it sounds a lot the same. Adultery, fornication, 
uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery or drugs, uh, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelry, and the like sort of thing, right? He says, of which I warn you in advance, just as I told you in person, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, right? They have no part in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And yet, we let them into our homes through our TVs, through the radio, through the internet. We go out sort of looking for these things in the stores and in the movie theaters. All these unfruitful works of darkness, they come to us and, and we receive them, right? Things that are shameful, right? Paul says here in verse 12 in Ephesians 5, that shameful even to talk about. Over in Romans, he asks, in my opinion, it's a very pointed verse. He says, what fruit did you have then? Wait, what fruit did you have from those things that you used to participate in when you, knew, when you didn't know God? Right? What fruit did you have at the time from the things that you are now ashamed of? The works of darkness, they're fruitless. Right? You have to confess. There was no good fruit. Those things lead to death. The wages of sin is death. But here we are telling each other, hey, did you watch the latest episode of our favorite show the other night? You know, oh, it was so funny. It was so great. It was so awesome. Uh, you know who I love. You know, uh, I love uh, you know, Jimmy Buffett. You know, all those greatest hits about getting drunk and smoking weed and, you know, basically frittering away my whole life on the beach and, and, you know, dreaming about this woman, that woman, and hooking up. And it's literally songs about wasting your life, right? Fruitless. Right? I mean, that's just an example. I don't, you know, I don't mean to pick on him, but, you know, isn't that fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness, right? Those who are still darkness not only do those things, but they approve of those who do them. Right? Christians, we have to admit that we have sin to confess in this area. Okay? There, there's still a great deal about the world that draws us, right? That's attractive to us, but which we have to say it's darkness. Right? The people that produce it are darkness. The product itself is darkness. It, it degrades the image of God in a man. It grieves the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for that great day of the revelation of Jesus Christ, right? Things that are funny, things that are sexy, things that are unclean. Like we need to go to our Father and confess that we're still too fond of them. Lord Jesus Christ prayed that the Father would sanctify us, sanctify your children, by your truth. Your word is truth. Shine your light, Lord God, and cause us to bear that good fruit, right? The fruit of the light. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness, all righteousness, all truth. Whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, right? Whatsoever things are of good repute, whatever is virtuous, excellent, praiseworthy. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right? Lord, cause us to delight in those things instead. Cause us to renounce, to rebuke, to shed, to discard the unclean things that we still receive, things that are darkness, things that are shameful, things that are ungodly, right? And, and make us holy, All right? It's been well said that the Father is, is not primarily concerned with making his children happy in this life. He is concerned with making us holy. And, and many of those who are in darkness, if they're plenty happy, of course, right? Uh, the first line of Psalm number 14 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And the first line of the next Psalm, though, 15, says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may stand on your holy hill? Right? Which one is it going to be? Which, which Psalm will describe us? 
right? I know we love a great story. I know we love a good joke, right? I know we love physical beauty or a good beat, you know, a catchy tune. But we're all well aware, Christians, at this point in our lives, that with those things, far too often comes the the fruitless works of darkness. And children of the light mustn't say, why, yes, I think this is all perfectly fine for me to consume. You know, my father doesn't mind if I, if I drift off a little while, if I enjoy myself a little while. I'm sure there won't be any lasting ill effects on my heart or on my happiness or on my self-control or on my thought life or on my nearness to God. Okay, it's, it's pure foolishness to, to act that way. You know the devil comes to you as a friend. Right? He comes to you bearing gifts, bearing pleasures. Right? He comes as an entertainer, as an ear tickler, you know, a mind stimulator, a sense stimulator. And he comes both in, in, in both uh, the debauched form and in the sophisticated form. Right? He comes to you on the adult channel and he comes to you on PBS. He comes in the R-rated uh, bloodbath movie, but he also comes in the BBC uh, a well-heeled miniseries. You know, he can, he can do it all. Whatever's your pleasure, whatever's your fancy. It's seduction, is it drama, is it fun, is it entertainment, is it, you know, is it, is it, is it education, right? Anything to detach you from the gospel, anything to turn your eyes away from the light. And as I already said, you know, the, the educated and refined and, and well-heeled, well-respected man, he has as much darkness as is the pervert in the gutter and the drug-dealing gang member, right? Because God is in neither of their thoughts. And they have their own ideas, and, and that's what they live by, and that's what they think other people ought to live by, and they produce darkness. They spread darkness. And the, and the Lord Jesus said, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light. Okay, you Christians once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, just as God is good, right? Like begets like. All righteousness, because God is righteous, he is just, and all truth, because there is one God, there is one mediator between God and men, and that's the man Jesus Christ. Find out what's, the, what's acceptable to the Lord and stop having fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, right, or, or reprove them, which we'll save that thought for next time. For it is shameful even to speak of the things which are done by them in the dark, right, in secret. But all things that are exposed or revealed or, or reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. And the supposition there is, you are that light of the world. Christ in you, right? You serve a function in the program of God, and that's to be a light, to, to make manifest the things of darkness, right? To, to shine the light upon them and help people to walk the path that God has laid out for us. And, and so they can avoid the pitfalls and the sparkly distractions and the traps. Right? God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right? Saved from filth, saved from sin. Have you been saved? Right? Have, you been, have you been born again? Has God shown the light of Jesus Christ into your heart? Has he dispelled the darkness? If so, then you are light in the Lord. Find out what is acceptable to the Lord and propagate that instead. Right? Contribute to the light. Be a source of light, not a source of darkness. And, and bring forth, bear, yield the fruit of the light. Have no fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness, so that you don't send mixed messages to a dying world. God forgive us that we do this, that we sometimes bear the fruit of the light and sometimes we contribute and participate in the darkness. Right? Or, look, make up your mind. Are we holy or are we unholy? Are we godly or are we ungodly? Are we pure or do we share in the sins of others? Right? Remember Christ. Remember Christ, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. 
In the Lord you are a light. You are the light of men. Lighten their paths. Lighten their minds. Shine Christ upon them. Right? You shall be my witnesses, right? I mean, that's, it's for you to spread now, to spread this call. Awake, sleepers, rise from your deadness, and Christ will shine upon you. So, uh, Christians, let's take this charge from the Lord. Let's do our part as children of light to bring salvation to men and women, to the ends of the earth, and to bring glory to our God and our Savior. So if God is willing, he will bless us in our efforts to do so. Heavenly Father, uh, we um, set ourselves before you, Lord, confessing that uh, sometimes we do look over our shoulder with longing at the city of destruction. Uh, forbid us, Lord, uh, from that, that we should ever do such a thing. Um, help us uh, to run to you, uh, to set our sights on the promised land, uh, to push forward, to press forward on upward. Thank you, Lord, for your redemption, for your tremendous patience with us, your great kindness to us. Lord, uh, forgive me for my sins, forgive my brothers and sisters for theirs. We want to serve you, Lord, as your dear children. Uh, so form Christ in us, uh, take not your Holy Spirit from us, Lord God, um, but be patient and kind. And Father, uh, we want to bring honor to your name. So thank you for your, for your word. Thank you for the message today. Thank you for the fellowship that we have in the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Lord God, we worship you and praise your name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that's all I have for you uh, for this Sunday, uh, 21st March. Um, hopefully I will see you again next Sunday in person on the 28th. It will be Palm Sunday and following that Easter. Uh, so God be with you until we meet again.